Welcome to another edition of the Let's Program uh, series. Today we're going to be talking about Scala and GUI programming and I'll be going over some of the basics and for this tutorial I really just wanted to show you how to write a GUI without having to use something like Scala FX or another library or framework or something like that. Um, so we're going to write a small program that lets us roll a number of dice and lets us decide how many sides we want on the dice. So first we're going to have our imports. Um, we're going to get Scala Swing for the GUI elements and event for all the listening and stuff like that. And then we're going to import uh, border panel dot position uh, just so that we can get like the layout for a border panel later on. Um, random is just used in conjunction with the actual program, the dice. And then image icon is going to be used with um, some buttons that we're going to make out of images. Um, and you can see that here that we imported Java X dot swing. So this is actually using Java's library and it's not using the swing wrapper that Scala uses. But I'll show you how those things can work in conjunction. I wanted to point out that it doesn't have to be one or the other, that Java and Scala can work together. So we'll start out, um, you need to make your object, which is going to be your main class, a simple swing application, or extends simple swing application. And then uh, we have a few bars here and vowels just to explain. First, we're going to have a bar to count the amount of dice. And um, that's pretty much going to be our only variable that's not held in some other form of a button or label or something like that. Um, you start with top, and then you're going to equal main frame, which is basically just going to set your program up to have the main frame be this level. And you can set stuff in it. And this is very Scala-like, so you don't have to, you know, make the frame and set title and all that. You just open up a block after the declaration, and inside you can set stuff like title and minimum size. Um, for this one, we set up a small dimension, uh, 400 by 200. Uh, then we're going to make a label. Um, so to make a label, all you have to do is call new label, and then similar to how you made the frame, you can just open up a block and set text equal to whatever you want to. Um, same thing for button. The only words you change are literally just button. Um, now, so the next thing we're going to discuss is radio buttons, which are similar just to buttons. Um, you'll notice all these are vowels. They don't have to be vars, even though that they are mutable in some sense. Uh, well, variables of them are mutable, but um, this reference has been changed, so we'll set that to a vowel. And, um, it's optional to leave the parentheses on or off, as you can see between these two lines here. And um, that's because Scala has parentheses inference. But we're going to go and set up four of those, and then we'll put them into a button group, which means that only one out of the four can be selected. And buttons is a set of button group, and you can see that you can concatenate onto that set using the plus equals operator. Um, so we put all four in there. And then next we're going to have a label for the amount of dice that we're currently using. And we'll set it equal to 1 at first because that's what we set our amount of dice variable up top to. Now, I wanted to use image for buttons and I wanted to show you how to do that. So the way I do it is I generate a label and then I give it an image icon. And you see here it's just a PNG. And I listen to... Uh, mouse.clicks because the label will have an, a variable in it called mouse and so when the mouse is clicked this event will fire but then we need to add to the reactions which is another set similar to the button set up above here um, so we'll add a reaction and we're going to match against the case now in this particular case we don't really need to know anything but just so you know the first variable is the component and then these two will be the position I can't remember what the last two are but um, these these are the only three that I've ever used, um, the component and the XY position. Um, and you can see that I just um, ignored those. And because I don't really care, I know that the mouse is clicked. And if it's clicked on the label, then that's what I want. Um, and so what we're going to do is increase the amount of dice when the up button is increased. And then we'll just set the label to that amount of dice and then the new amount of dice. So same thing for the down button except for we need to make sure that the button can't go negative so simple if statement. Uh, 
And so you can see here that image icon was the thing that we imported from Java. And there's no secret code or anything going on here. It just works well and meshes together. Um, often you'll find that some of the data types are in Java's libraries and you use them in the Scala wrapper. Um, but as you can see here, that's not an issue. Uh, it just works well together and that's, that's what you want it to do. Uh, so next we'll um, start doing some layout. Uh, now that we've got all our components down and we'll make a box panel and set the orientation of vertical so that the components will be laid out on top of each other. And then contents, just like we did with um, before with these sets up here, we're going to use the plus equals operator. And so contents is going to be set to up and uh, we're going to put a V strut in to separate the two buttons out. So we're going to have our two images, uh, one and then a 30 uh, wide V strut to separate them out. And then we're going to have down. And we're going to put those into the box panel. And then next we're going to have a flow panel uh, with the amount uh, panel, which is what we just created here. And we're going to have the label next to that. And so that way we'll get a nice little buttons on the left side and then we'll have the label on the right side so that when they click the buttons they're right next to each other. Um, we'll make another box panel with the orientation vertical and um, we'll set all of our components into it uh, and we'll add an empty swing border just to kind of space out the sides a little bit so the, the GUI is not cramped and we'll add in our button and then we'll add in our result label and we'll add in the amount control that we just created here and then we'll make a new uh, box panel and we'll add in the uh, radio radio buttons all into one group here. Now I could have done this other in another place, but I was just showing you you can do it in line as well as creating it. So if you don't need, uh, for example, we're not going to need to use this box panel again. If you don't want to do that, you can um, just create them in line. I did create a few up here that have names even though I didn't need them, but it's just mostly for... Um, style. I like to see stuff laid out, but I was want to show you the inline as well. Um, so you set your border equal to empty border, 30 by 30, and then 10, and then 30. Okay, so just like we did before with the uh, mouse clicks, we're going to listen to the roll dice button. And on our reactions, a little bit different from what we did earlier, because now we care about what's actually being clicked, because um, this is the mainframe, and so everything that's clicked or every reaction that happens on the mainframe is going to come to this reaction set and look through these cases. Now, you can add in multiple cases in one, but a lot of people do tend to add them in one at a time with blocks. Um, we'll see here that we have a button clicked. Now, you'll notice that the back ticks are around the name of our button, and that's just, it matches the reference, basically, is what it's doing there. So, it's going to look for that specific object. Um, as the component of what was clicked and we don't really need anything from that reference um, so it's, it's basically just saying if this was the exact object that was clicked um, go ahead and do this block right below it everything that's indented is included in this case so you don't have to put brackets around it um, and we'll make a value dice number <coughs> and dice group selected so the reason we have to do this is because this is going to return an option and as you're familiar with if you're familiar with Scala options can sometimes be non-defined and if they're not defined then you need to react to that so um, first we'll make sure that they're selected um, at least one out of the roll dice uh, buttons uh, the radio buttons and if it's defined then we'll go ahead and uh, use that down here so first we'll make a var random number um, we actually won't want to rename this. Probably a better name would be something like uh, total. And then we can change this here to total. Uh, before I had it working with just one die, and so random number was a fair name, but I think total will be better here. Um, so we go ahead and do a for loop for uh, zero until amount of dice. So we we know that this is set to a reasonable value because we ensured it with our checks on the buttons earlier so it's either one or a higher integer um, and then we're going to 
run through all of those dice and roll them for the same number of dice. So what we'll do is random dot next int, and then for our range, we're going to have zero until the size of the dice. So we'll do dice number dot get to get the actual object because now we know that that selection was set. And then we'll get its text and we'll turn that into an integer. And that will set the range from zero. And so if we select the eight sided dice, for example, we'll have zero to seven. So we need to increase that by one because we don't want to roll zeros. And we want plus one. So we just keep doing that. And the for loop runs over all the dice and rolls them. And then it gives you the total. Now, if they haven't selected a uh, number of dice, we might want to tell them. So that's what we did here. We just set the result.text to uh, this little message. And that's the end of our program. It's really short and sweet. Um, so now we'll compile it. Um, give me a terminal over here. I could do this through Emacs, but I want you guys to see what's actually happening here. So we'll change to the directory that we're working in. And all this code will be uploaded to GitHub. So if you want to download it and work with it, you can. You don't have to copy it from the video or anything like that. And you can see that I've already compiled it once, so we'll go ahead and scroll and compile. Um, and there's a little message there below the Scala compile, but that's just because I don't have Java Home currently set, so we'll go ahead and set that just that way. When we actually run the let's code object, and I'll get that message again. Okay, um, so here's our GUI, and we can click roll the dice, and see it immediately told us that that was wrong. And so then we can select the mount, and we can change the amount of dice we have with these two buttons here. These are the labels that we made, so we can you know roll. 7, 8 sided dice, and we got a 28. So that's, that's the introduction to GUI programming in Scala um, without using a library. Now, I do recommend that you get familiar with those stuff like ScalaFX and, and using the Java libraries directly. You can, you can always use Java code directly in Scala. Um, so you could use AWT and um, the JavaX library. Um, there's going to be a lot more videos to come. Hopefully I'm going to do a Another video, just an introduction to Scala, some of the stuff that I've noticed about it. Um, probably do a, a Python and Ruby and maybe a common list video. Uh, so if you guys like this stuff, just uh, comment below or like my videos or subscribe to my channel.